Hi, I'm pro saxophonist Jamie Anderson, and you're watching Get Your Sax Together, the home of free online saxophone lessons. On this week's show, I'm going to give you some great tips and tricks on playing sax in a big band. Here we go. If you want to improve not just your big band sax skills, but your sax skills across the board, then make sure you check out my free Saxophone Success Masterclass. The link is down there below. That's my free gift to you. It's an hour of solid teaching, zero fluff, taking through a bunch of really cool stuff, which is really going to move your playing forward. So go and check out the Saxophone Success Masterclass. Also, if you want to go further and take your playing to the next level, then consider joining the Inner Circle membership. This is my private membership where people get bonus content on YouTube videos, uh, analysis of great classic solos, a wonderful community, special guests, a monthly Q&A, and all sorts of absolutely awesome stuff, which is really going to make such a big difference to your life. So go and check out the Inner Circle membership, which uh, the link of which is in the description, and you can see it right there below. Okay, without further ado, <laughs> let's move on to this big band saxophone stuff, and let's see if we can really improve your performance. Here we go. So what we're going to do is, I have written out a classic sax soli, which is from In a Mellow Tone by Count Basie. It's a 32 bar sax soli, nice mid-tempo, really swinging. It's a great thing to illustrate how you play big band sax. So we're going to take it one instrument at a time, starting with the lead alto. So let's talk about lead alto first. I'm sure it goes without saying, but if you're playing lead alto in the big band, then you are responsible for leading the entire sax section, although you are subservient to the lead trumpet. Okay, so lead trumpet, top of the tree, lead alto is following the lead trumpet, and then all the saxes are following both the lead trumpet and the lead alto. But in the case of a sax ollie, what like we've got today, you are listening to the lead alto if you're playing any of the other saxes. So big responsibility on the lead alto. So what's going to make a great lead alto player? Number one, a really nice, big, creamy, fat sound that everyone can hear and everyone can follow. That's super important. You have a really big tone and really blowing out to the absolute maximum that you can if you're leading the section. Second thing is to have impeccable timing, groove and swing. So the rhythm, okay? If you're playing lead alto, you're dictating the whole groove of the rest of the section. So you've really got to dig in to whatever style of music you're playing in the big band. You've got to lay it down exactly where it is and everyone else follows you. So the third thing you have to have is leadership, okay? You have to be the person in the section who's calling the shots. You have to be saying, this is long, this is short. If people are not playing it long or short or their tuning is off, you have to gently remind these people, hey, this is long, this is short, and get your gang together, <laughs> all right? <laughs> so you are in charge of bossing that section, not being bossy, but you are bossing that section so that the whole squad sounds really great. So don't forget about that. So you've got great sound, great rhythm, being a great leader, and of course, it really helps if you're a great sight reader. If you can sight read anything, it's really going to make a big difference to how well you do as a lead alto player because you're not going to be rehearsing everything all the time, as I can tell you from uh, bitter experience. So it helps to be a really good sight reader. If, you can, if you're a great soloist as well, <laughs> then that goes without saying that that's going to be the fifth fantastic quality for a lead alto player. Well, that really goes for all the saxophones. Um, you can have alto solos, tenor solos, baritone solos. If you're a great soloist, that's a great asset to your big band playing. Although there's usually somebody else that can play the jazz. So it's not strictly speaking, you know, 100% necessary to be in a sax section. I've done plenty of gigs, even pro ones, even at Ronnie Scott's, where one person in the sax section who's not a strong soloist doesn't want to take a solo and doesn't take a single solo all night. So it's not the end of the game. Right. Let's look at this solly then. And first of all, I'll try and put the music up on the screen and you'll hear the recording of me playing the lead alto part. So just look at the music and then listen to the lead alto and see what I'm doing. And to start with, I'm just doing the second half of the solly, okay? Because it's a 32 bar solly. I will play the whole thing at the end, but we're gonna start with the second half just so you can really hear what's going on. And see if you can hear what I'm doing 
when I'm playing lead alto with the vibrato, with pulling the time around, with longs and shorts, with stretching phrases, really digging in. See if you can check out what I'm doing as I play these 16 bars. Now, let's talk about alto two. So your job as alto two is to sit right under that lead alto. That's all you gotta do. You don't have to lead anything. You don't have to dictate anything. Now, here's an interesting thing. You can play pretty much as loud as the lead alto. Why? Because you're playing notes which are lower. So the lead alto's line will automatically carry above yours. So if you play too quiet, there won't be any beef in that section, it'll just be old lead alto and it'll sound like one sax instead of five. So trust me, because the lead alto is playing the higher part, the lead alto will always cut through. So just tuck in, but make sure you play with a nice big full sound. Like Almost try and play as loud as the lead alto, but without overtly overpowering them. Right, let's get back to the soli. We're gonna play the same thing again, but now you're gonna hear the rhythm section with just the two altos. And of course, it goes without saying the key when you're playing a big band second alto, is to be a perfect shadow for that first alto. Perfect match. You wanna be, you know, you wanna be connected so it's like one instrument. Here we go, here's the track with the lead alto and the second alto, check this out. So the track that you're hearing today is uh, in a mellow tone and it's the Count Basie version taken from the 1959 album Breakfast, Dance and Barbecues. It's like a live recording, I believe. Um, it's not exactly the same as the original. I couldn't find the exact same one, but it's very close. So if you want to hear what the Count Basie sax section sounds like playing the demo from today's lesson, then go and check out that 1959 album Breakfast, Dance and Barbecue. Okay, moving on to the tenors now. I'm gonna cluster the tenors together, tenor one and tenor two. Now your role is pretty much the same as alto two. You're gonna to have to tuck up under the whole section. And again, don't worry about playing too loud. Um, although you don't wanna be playing second tenor and really honking it. With the altos, it's a bit different because they're that bit higher up. With the tenors, you just play at a really good level. And again, you really try and match the phrasing as best you can. This is something super important to remember with big band sections. One person can ruin it for everyone. You're only as strong as the weakest Fraser. <laughs> not, the, not the name Fraser, the, the way somebody has their phrasing. If one person is phrasing badly in the section, it's gonna muddy the waters for everybody. So you'll hear as I add in the tenors now into the recording, everyone, everyone being me. <laughs> so it's super easy when you're just playing playing uh, with your own parts. Um, when, when you're playing, you need to match as a unit exactly. And the more you can match, the more dramatic and the more groovy and the more amazingly tight that whole section will sound. So hopefully this will be tight. <laughs> well, this is now gonna be the rhythm section with two altos and the two tenors. Just before I play it, one more note. It gets tricky to match the phrasing if you've got repeated notes and if the contour of your line is different from that of the lead alto. You've just got to listen to the lead alto and try not to play the line the way you would play it if it was a solo, but play it the way the lead alto is 
playing there. And there's a few there's a few moments in the solly where the parts are different or there's a few repeated notes here and there. So you really have to be conscious of what the lead alto is doing as a tenor player. Because the classic thing is the lead alto has got this lovely top line and then somewhere down, you know, in the second tenor, which I've played so much second tenor, you're going, do, 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 ba, 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 ba. you're doing all these really rubbish harmonies, then the line doesn't flow at all. So just be aware of that. You've almost got to be a better tenor player to play tenor two than you do to play tenor one. So remember that if somebody puts you on tenor two. All right, here we go. Here's the uh, top four saxes, alto, alto, tenor, tenor, and the rhythm section. Finally, let's talk about, which side is it? That side. Let's talk about that beast in the corner, the baritone. Now, the baritone is quite different from all the other instruments. Number one, very often the baritone in a sax solo is doubling what the alto is doing. You're doing exactly the same line in octaves. That's a very common way of writing. So you can kind of almost give it like the lead alto as long as you're matching the lead alto player's phrasing and style. You can really give it one down there because the baritone will get lost quite easily. And then occasionally, of course, the baritone is doing something independent. Quite often you'll have four saxes doing one thing and the baritone doing something else down here. So your role as the baritone is quite a complex one. Also, uh, we need to talk about range. When you're right up at the top of the baritone, you're playing almost like a tenor. And when you're right down the bottom, you're playing more like with the bass instruments or the bass trombone. So you have to wear two hats as a baritone player, depending what register of the instrument you're in, which is another challenge. So a baritone is actually very hard to play in a big band sax section, almost as hard as the lead alto, I would wager. So let's add in the baritone on this 16 bar pattern. So now we've got the full sax section and it should, uh, fingers crossed, sound really great. Here we go. Let's now play the entire 32 bar solly and see what it sounds like with all the five saxes and all the points that I've talked about. There's some really quite tricky stuff at the beginning of the, at the beginning of the solly, by the way, which was uh, quite pearly to work out. Um, so hope you enjoy it. Here it is. There's the finished product from the sax section.
So that's all we got time for today. I hope you picked up a few little licks and tricks, a few little uh, bonus little bits of teaching that will help you when you next play in a big band. Just things to be aware of, things to listen for. Be aware of the blend. Be aware of phrasing exactly with the lead alto and all these kind of things. So hope that's been helpful. Now, I've included a whole load more in the inner circle that I haven't got time to put in here. There's backing tracks that you can play along with all the different sax parts in the inner circle. And I also explained how I recorded it and lots of other stuff, including the PDF of the score. So if you want to get even more than you're getting here, go and check out the inner circle. Just before I go, if you've bought me a coffee, I really, really appreciate it. Thank you so much. It really does make such a big difference and you're all so kind. You can use the link that you can see there. Until next week, we're going to have even more cool stuff to sax up for your Sunday. Practice hard, practice smart and enjoy your music. Take it easy. I hope you picked up a few little ticks and uh, tips and a few, a few little ticks. Picked up a few little ticks and got Lyme disease. To really optimise your... That's a stupid way of saying it, isn't it? Optimise your big band performance. <laughs> Ridiculous.